Hello, I'm Sister Jonine Coiler, a Franciscan sister on staff here at St. Mark's and a spiritual director in the Tucson area. I grew up on a farm just outside a small German Catholic town in eastern Wisconsin, the youngest of five children and the only girl. I much preferred being outdoors, in the barn and in the fields with my father and my brothers than inside with my mother. That may not have been easy for her to accept, as it meant she could not pass on her wonderful skills of cooking and sewing to me. Much later in my life, I learned how generous a mother's love is. I decided to become a sister early during my senior year in high school. I was 17 years old. The clearest reason for this decision that I could give my friends and my boyfriend was that I wanted to be of service to people. How did I come to that decision? The short answer is relationships. The long answer is this story of my faith journey. In Catholic grade school, I came to see the sisters who taught me as friends, except my sixth grade teacher who gave me a D in math. In high school, where I was taught by members of the religious order I was eventually to join, the sisters came to be our friends. They came to our dances. They went ice skating with us and frequently came to my home on a Saturday for some of my mother's homemade raised donuts. They were real people who loved and served other real people. Then there were my two aunts and a cousin, farmers' daughters, just like me, who were teaching, nursing, and playing the organ as sisters, women of service who lived a vowed life in community and seemed very happy I accepted the invitation to join these women, to share my life with them, to give and receive with them, to be in relationship with them. Two months after I graduated from high school, I left home, entered the School Sister of St. Francis community at St. Joseph Convent in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and received the habit a year later. Because we kept silence, except when in class and during allowed times of recreation, I didn't really get to know the other women with whom I lived the first three years. It was my relationship with God that began to grow deeper. Praying the Psalms of the Divine Office and spending time in our Adoration Chapel were new ways for me to give praise and thanks and pray for the needs of God's people. Even the familiar prayers of Mass, the Rosary, and the Stations of the Cross were now offered with hundreds of other women united through their commitment to service in a beautiful chapel. By the time of my profession of vows, three years after I had entered, I was quite certain I was on the path God wanted me on. If I could fast forward from 1964 to 2016, without any challenges to that earlier certitude, this would be a very short story. However, our God is a God of surprises, some wonderful and easy to accept, and some difficult, as I came to know. While I was in Portland, Oregon, at the Medical Center for my nutrition internship, I met a seminarian. He was bright and funny and good-looking, and we had great talks about all the changes in the church following Vatican II. Another relationship, and this one, led me to question whether I wanted to live the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience for the rest of my life. But time was on God's side. My year in Portland came to an end, and I returned to Milwaukee. Ed went to study in Brussels, and we never met again. What is it that God wants us to learn from our life experiences? I was given another opportunity to answer that when two years after I returned to Wisconsin, my father died quite unexpectedly after a very brief illness. My youngest brother still lived at home, but I was the only daughter. Should I request to be dispensed from my vows and return home to be with my mother? 
I prayed for guidance, and I prayed for the courage and wisdom to talk with my mother honestly and with an open heart. The generosity and love that had guided her all of her life allowed her to thank me for coming home, and if I needed to, that would be fine, but she assured me that she would be fine. Just write and come home more often, she said. I did that until her death just two years later. I believe my mother loved me into my school sister community and loved me into remaining in that relationship because she somehow knew that's where God wanted me. My almost 55 years as a school sister of St. Francis have unfolded in ways I could never have scripted. I began my hospital ministry in Wisconsin and Illinois and moved to Tucson in 1976. During my 24 years here, I came to love the desert and my ministry as a clinical nutritionist at Tucson Medical Center. In the year 2000, I received a call from my provincial asking me to return to our mother house to help our senior sisters as they made their life transitions. I had no idea why God was asking me to leave Tucson. What skills did I have to help them? I was having a difficult time discerning my own decision. I did, ever so hesitantly, answer yes to this call, and the following 14 years were truly grace-filled. I witnessed the faithfulness of our elder sisters in so many ways and learned from their wisdom. Though I was their junior by as much as 20 years, the sacredness of our bond and community led to respect and trust for each other, and I maintain a relationship with many of those sisters to this day. Having received my certificate in spiritual direction while still in Milwaukee, eager to begin my practice, I returned to Tucson in November of 2014. St. Mark's became my faith community, and again, surprisingly unscripted, I was invited by Father John to become part of the RCIA team here last year. Journeying with those who seek to know Jesus better and learn about the Catholic faith has deepened my own spiritual life. The RCIA members have helped me recognize in a new way the thread that has been woven through my entire life. God is in our relationships. In the 17th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus says to his Father, I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you loved me. When we are brought into the relationship between the Father and the Son, it is through the relationships we have with others. Union with God is the promise and it is the goal of our lives. St. Francis of Assisi said, I have done what is mine to do. May you now do what is yours.